Mystery is my hobby. Ladies and gentlemen, Barton Drake speaking. For tonight's drama, I've selected case history number 118 from my book, Mystery is My Hobby. I call it Death Paints with Purple. Now, back to Glenn Langan and the first act of Mystery is My Hobby. Don't you think you better skip this one, Johnny? Yeah, maybe I should. You know, I can't get over how much better you look since you came back from the desert, Johnny. Yeah, it did me good in more ways than one. The desert's good for the eyes. <laughs> you mean you can paint better? I mean I can see better. See who my real friends are. Oh? And who some of them are. Does that include me? Yeah, Bill, I know where you stand. <laughs> Uh, how are you coming on Andy's picture? Andy McAndrews can take that picture and go to places. But... Well, Johnny, what has Andy done? Well, if you'll take a good look, you can see what he's doing now. Oh, oh that, that's nothing. Everybody does. That's what I mean about my eyes. Well, I'm going to put a stop to that right now. No, no, Johnny, don't start anything. Come on. I'm sure Johnny's grateful for all you've done, Andy. Oh, I've really done very little, my dear. Take your arm from around my wife's waist, your heel. Why, Johnny, shame on you. Andy's only... What's the matter, Johnny? I don't think because you'll buy my pictures that you can love my wife. Johnny, you don't mean that. I don't allow anybody to love my wife but me. Henley, I ought to knock you down for that. Well, why don't you try it? I'm standing up. Oh, by George, I think I will. Okay, you ask for it. Why are you, you swine? Cut it out. Don't, don't, Andy, please. No one takes a poke at me without Andy. Stop. Now stop. I'll kick his head in. Now that's enough, Andy. You've already knocked him down. You shouldn't have done that, Andy. I wouldn't give you that picture now if you were the last guy in the world. Boys, boys, what's the trouble? Oh, Andy and Johnny had a little argument. I was out in the kitchen and heard the The heel was making love to my wife. Andy, you weren't. Of course not, Verna. I think Johnny's a little drunk. Well, I won't stand for fights in my house. Andy, you and John had better leave. But Johnny picked the fight, Verna, honestly. And he hit Andy first. And Johnny, you'd better go. I wouldn't stay under any circumstances. Come on, Carl. Let's get out of here. I'm not coming. I'll stay here and come home later in a cab. I'll have it your own way. Good night, folks. Johnny, when you get home, you'd better take a couple of aspirin. Bill, go along with him, please. He's in no condition to be alone. I've seen him in these fits of temper before. Oh, sure, Carl. I'll be glad to. Well, how about it, Johnny? Sure, Bill, come on. I've got some things to talk over with you, too. There you are, Johnny. Tucked in all nice and cozy. Right here in the couch, right in your own studio. Thanks, Bill. I don't feel so good. Yeah. You want anything? No, just want to sleep. Yeah. Only 11 o'clock. Well, I'll turn off your light. I'm uh, going to back to the party. Now, you just leave everything to me, huh? Say, that's the picture you're painting for Andy McAndrews, this desert scene? One was a painting for Andy. You can't have it, my masterpiece. Andy's heel. <laughs> Ah, uh, you feel differently in the morning. You'll think it's a... <laughs> Sound asleep. Oh. Three o'clock. Oh. Oh, what a head. Glass of water. Gotta get a glass of water. Bathroom. Slippers. Glass. By the water basin. Oh, here's a glass. Water. Nothing like good old water. Good 
Say, oh, what? Well, I... No. It's it something. It's in the water. The water's poison. I... Just to the phone. Life. That phone. My only picture. Masterpiece. Barton Drake turned into the little white picket gate and walked across the flagstones to the whitewashed brick cottage, which was the home and studio of John Henley. Bart was an admirer of Henley's work and wished to commission him to do the illustrations for his new book. He took the two tile steps and reached out to ring when the door opened. Bart, what are you doing here? Oh, Inspector Noah Dadden. Inspector, are you, uh, having your portrait painted? Don't be funny. I asked you what you were doing here. I came to see John Henley. Why? What for? He's going to do some illustration for me if it's any of your business, which it isn't. Look, don't give me uh-uh. that. Ah, I get it. You've been posing for Henley. He told me he was going to do a group for the museum on Neanderthalic men. Whatever that is, it's not funny. <laughs> well, as long as you're here, you might as well come on in. Oh, thank you, Inspector. Body's in the studio. Body? Inspector, what? Still kidding, huh? And you didn't know that John Henley committed suicide. Henley? Suicide? Inspector, with God as my judge, I... Well, I didn't have the slightest idea. Hmm. Might have been curious. I came here to talk to John about some work he's going to do for me. Well, maybe, but if that's the case, you might as well go on back home. He squeezed his last splotch of paint from a paint tube. Suicide? Oh, I can't believe that Johnny wasn't the kind to commit suicide. Why not? He'd rather drown his troubles in a bottle. Well, that ties in. He wasn't quite himself last night. How do you know? Look, Bart, I've investigated this case. I've talked to all the people connected with it. That's how I know. And I'm all through with it. And I'm going home. Just as soon as the wagon comes to take away the body. Hmm. Well, uh, couldn't you be persuaded to uh, give me just a teeny, teeny bit about this, Inspector, please? Pretty please? Oh, all right. Now, look. Henley was at a party last night, a party that was thrown by Mrs. Verna Billings, a widow. Was his wife, Cora Widow? Of course she was, and so were a couple of other people, a fellow by the name of Bill Royal and another guy by the name of Andy McAndrews. Well, Henley proceeds to get nasty and starts a fight with, with this McAndrews guy. Huh? Makes a complete ass of himself. So the hostess, this widow, orders him out of the house. I see. Did he leave? Sure. This Bill Royal drove him home here and put him to bed. Bill Royal? What was the matter with his wife? Because it was only 11 o'clock and she wanted to stay at the party. She was mad at him, besides. Uh Uh-huh. Then uh, what did this Bill Royal do? Went back to the party. About 3 o'clock, Henley gets up, goes to the bathroom, mixes himself a glass of poison. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute, Inspector. How do you know this happened at just uh, 3 o'clock? Because he called the folks at the party right after 3 and told them he'd taken poison. Also made some crazy remark about finishing a masterpiece. Something he'd been painting for this McAndrews guy. Hmm. Did you say the body was still here? Yeah, in the studio. Mind if I take a look? No, I suppose not. Come on. Thank you, Inspector. He isn't very pretty. The kind of poison he took did things to him. Was it quick acting? Huh. I'll say. Couldn't have lived over three minutes. Well, there he is. Mm. Just as we found him, lying there right in front of his easel. Hmm. He certainly ruined that picture, didn't he? Yeah. I wonder why he did that. Stuck his fingers in some purple paint and dragged them clear across the painting. That's what he must have meant when he said that he'd finished the masterpiece. Huh. He finished it, all right. Uh-uh. Inspector, I... I believe that Henley was trying to tell us something. Oh, uh, did you happen to find out for whom he was doing this painting? Sure, the McAndrews guy. Hey. I got you, Bart. He and McAndrews had a fight and he... Come on, we're going to have another little talk with that guy. You sure? 
and McAndrews is here, Mrs. Bill. Yeah, they're all here. McAndrews, Henley's wife, and Bill Royal. Didn't any of them go home after the party? Sure, they all did, but they came right back again. Been slopping up drinks and consoling the widow. Now, Ring. It's a rather peculiar thing to do, isn't it? Huh. Yes? Oh, how do you do, Inspector? Good afternoon, Miss Billings. Meet Barton Drake. How do you do? Won't you come in? Yep. What brings you back? I thought you'd finished your investigation. I got a couple of more questions I want to ask McAndrews. They're in the other room. Bart. Bart and Drake. How do you do, sir? Why did he do it, Bart? Why did he do it? Do? Do what? Commit suicide. He didn't. Really? Oh, did. Your husband, Cora, was murdered. Oh. Mur- now, see here, Bart, I didn't John think... Henley was murdered. And I believe he was murdered by one of you people in this room. Well, that's a very serious accusation, Mr. Drake. Murder is very serious, Mr. McAndrews. Oh, no, no. My name's Royal. Uh, that's McAndrews. Oh, my mistake. Thank but you. he couldn't have been murdered. At least not by any of us. We were all here all evening. That is all except Bill, and he was only gone for half an hour when he drove Johnny home at 11. Yes, and we were still here at 3 o'clock in the morning when Johnny phoned and told us he'd taken poison. Yes, I know. Inspector, didn't you want to ask Mr. McAndrews some questions? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, how about that fight you had with Henley McAndrews? Fight? Yeah. Oh, it was perfectly silly. Johnny accused me of making love to his wife. Were you? Of course not. Who came off second best in that fight? Johnny did. I'm afraid I knocked him down. Mm Mm-hmm. And that made you mad. Mad enough to kill him, maybe. No, no, that isn't right. He'd be the one that'd be mad. Now, look here. It was nothing more than a drunken brawl. I was very fond of Johnny. I bought most of his pictures. Besides that, just recently, I financed him to a trip to the Southwest where he could get the proper atmosphere for a special painting I wanted. You're sure it wasn't to get Henley out of town so you could have a clear field with his wife? That's a nasty remark, Inspector. I'd advise you to watch your tongue. Oh, yeah? Inspector... There just might be something to the inspector's remark, Mr. McAndrews. For instance, did you see Cora at any time while Johnny was gone? Well, yes, a couple of times. I took her to a few shows. It didn't mean anything. I just didn't want her to be lonesome. That isn't quite true, Bart. I've been having to fight Andy off for some time. What? Why, that's a dirty, deliberate lie. Tell me more, Cora. He's been constantly asking me to leave, Johnny. So? Did you consider it? Certainly not. I was very much in love with Johnny. Mm-hmm. And do you think that going out with another man while your husband is out of town is being a good and loving wife? I only put up with Andy because of the things he was doing for my husband. Why, you lying little wench! Shut up, you! Cora is telling the truth, Mr. Drake. So? Mm-hmm. Mr. Royal? We all saw what was going on. In fact, I took it upon myself to warn Andy that Johnny would kill him if he ever found out. Well, I don't know what your reasons are for saying these things, but there isn't one word of truth in anything any of you have said. They're nothing but a lot of libelous, vicious lies. I'm deeply in love with Verna Billings here. In fact, we're going to be married. Isn't that right, Verna? Well, I... I, I... But what's the matter with everybody? I couldn't have killed anybody. I didn't leave this house for a single instant last night. You'll back me up on that, I'm sure, Verna. I'm sorry, Andy, but I can't. What, what do you mean? About two o'clock, you said things were getting stifling in here, and you went out for a walk, remember? Uh, yes, Looks but Looks like I... you're a crook, McAndrews. Besides all this, Henley pointed a finger of guilt right at you just before he died. He smeared your pretty new picture all over with a gob of purple paint. Come on, you're under arrest for murder. <laughs> And now, back to Glenn Langan for the second act of... Mystery is my hobby. I don't see why you had to come up here to McAndrews' office, Bart. I've already got enough evidence to hang him. Hmm? Hang who? McAndrews. Well, you see, I'd uh, rather hang the murderer. Huh? Say, are you nuts? McAndrews is a murderer. Mm, well, I've uh, got some different ideas, Inspector. Take a look in the file cabinet, will you? See if you can locate John Henley's file. Okay. Hurry up, will you, Inspector? They're right here. All right. Give them here. What do you expect to find in here? Letters, I hope. Uh, uh, here's something. Huh. A letter written to McAndrews from Henley when he was in the Southwest. I can't see how that could have anything to do with it. Listen to this, Inspector. Well... Dear Andy, sure want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to paint the desert. I'm enjoying every minute of it. You were right. The sun has boiled out the you-know-what. I think I've cured myself completely, but I'm beginning to experience the awful loneliness that an alcoholic feels in sobriety. 
So to keep myself from going crazy, I'm doing a little prospecting. What do you know? Funny that a painter should do anything like that, isn't it? Don't fall over in a faint if I should happen to find something. And if I do, I'll be able to repay you very substantially for all your kindnesses. Sincerely, Johnny. <laughs> no more to promote there. Yeah. Not the middle of in kisses. Uh-uh. Wait a minute, Inspector. Here's another one dated uh, six weeks later. Now, don't tell me he found a gold mine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like he did. Listen. Uh-huh. McAndrews, heard through a friend of mine that you've been fooling around with Cora. Too bad for you, my friend, that you didn't stay in your own backyard. Uh. Incidentally, I've nearly finished the picture that I came here to paint, but you'll never get it. What? Also, incidentally, I found out what I was looking for in the hills. <laughs> but you'll never get any of that either. Instead, you're going to get a good stiff poke in the jaw, Henley. P.S. Pass the bottle. What do you think of that, Inspector? Oh, but you kill me. Do I? Sure. What you've just found cinches the case against McAndrews. If ever there was an airtight motive for a murder, there's one. Yeah? Just how do you figure it? Hanley goes prospecting with McAndrew's money, finds the gold mine, and then refuses to split. Mm. Guys are getting themselves killed every day for pulling double crosses like that. Yes, I'll have to admit that was the motive for the murder, Roy. Oh, well, you don't have to feel too bad. Guys got to guess wrong once in a while. Thank you, Inspector. Would uh, you do me a favor? Sure, glad to. What do you want? Would you mind rounding up that gang and bringing them up to John Henley's studio? Okay, but I don't for the life of me see what for. Well, you see, Inspector, I uh, want to apologize to them for all my nasty thoughts. Well, come on, let's get this over with. What more do you want with us? Oh, I just feel as though I should do the Inspector a favor. I got him into this, you know. He had the case all solved. Suicide. You've already done me a favor, Bart. You put me on to McAndrews. Yes, but I'm afraid you've gotten off on a detour. Huh? Why, you said... Mrs. Billings. Yes? Andy McAndrews was quite right in saying that he intended to marry you, wasn't he? Well... In fact, you intended to marry him. That uh... is, until Bill Royal here started lavishing his attentions on you. But then you decided that you two would make a better team. Well, that's you? a lie. I never... Bill! How could you... Why, you and I were going to... Thank you, Cora. Hey, Bart, how'd you know that? I didn't. I pulled that one out of the blue, Inspector, but it got the desired result. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm ready to tell you who killed John Henley, how and why. We know who did it. Andy McAndrew. No, Cora, you're wrong and you know it. Johnny knew what he was talking about when he said that somebody was playing around with you. Only he didn't accuse the right party. It was you, Bill Royal. Me? Why? Don't deny it. Cora's already given it away. It'll do you no good. At the same time, you are still seeing Verna on the side. Bill, I never would have believed... Well, you're well rid of him, Mrs. Billings. It was only your money he was after. He only switched over to Cora when he learned that Johnny had discovered a gold mine. I don't believe it. Bill really loves him. I love him. Love is something nobody can help. It just happened. Yes, unfortunately. Now, Mr. Royal, in order for you to get your hands on this mining property, it was necessary for you to marry Johnny's wife. Hey, Bart, he couldn't do that. She was already married. Yes, indeed, Inspector. And you can't just wish you were single again, can you? Also, to make marriage a profitable occupation, it was necessary for the property to come into Cora's hands completely with no strings attached. How would you arrange such a situation, Inspector? Easy. Henley had to die. Correct. And so, Bill Royal, you killed him. Yeah. What radio program have you been listening to? Still not ready to admit it, huh? Don't be silly. I have a perfect alibi. So? John was alive at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was at Verner's party at 3 o'clock in the morning, and everybody who was there will have to swear to it, whether they want to or not. Now, how are you going to get around that, Mr. Smart Detective? And these same people will swear to the fact that Johnny was drunk. Sure, why not? Mm-hmm. They'll also swear to the fact that you drove him home, that you were gone only about a half an hour, just long enough to tuck him into bed and to get back here. Yes, I'll swear to that myself. It's been established in the autopsy that John Henley died by a very quick-acting poison, that he must have died within three minutes after he took it. Well, all the more reason why I couldn't have given it to him. No, Drake, you're barking down the wrong hole. Oh, no, Mr. Royal. I'll show you how you could have given it to him. In fact, how you did give it to him. <laughs> if you can do that, I'll take some of the stuff myself. Thanks for the tip. Inspector, you better take steps. Right, Mark. Hey, no, no, you don't. You'll... Shut up for us. Watch it. Leave me. Stand still, will you? you? Better be thorough, Inspector. It wouldn't take very much of that, you know. Yeah. Here's something. Hey, Bart, you're right. This is the same stuff. Well, that still doesn't prove I gave any of it to Henley. No, but I'll tell you just what happened, and maybe that will convince you, Mr. Royal. You see, when you brought John Henley home, 
You tuck him into bed in the studio. The studio, by the way, has its own individual bathroom. You knew that he'd had too much to drink and that he'd wake up and be thirsty. So, what did you do? Huh. You tell me. It's my pleasure. After putting him to bed, you quietly slipped into the bathroom and dropped a small amount of this poison into a drinking glass that was on the stand by the wash basin. That's all. Then you went back to the party and waited. At three o'clock, John Henley woke, just as you figured he would, went to the bathroom to quench his thirst. Threw himself a glass of water and drank it. By the way, am I doing all right? It's your story. Go on. Thank you. The stuff you use, Bill Royal, has an amazing effect. It counteracts the effects of alcohol right now. In two seconds, Hanley was as sober as a judge. He knew what had happened to him and who had done it. No doubt his subconscious mind remembered seeing you go into the bathroom. Anyway, he rushed to the phone and called Mrs. Billings home, hoping he'd be able to speak to his wife and tell her what had happened. The poor guy. He never did know that you, too, had double-crossed him, Cora. But again, he was out of luck because you, Bill, answered the phone, and at that time, it wouldn't do him any good just to accuse the man who murdered him. Great story, Drake. A great story. Thank you. I can see why your books sell so well. However, in this case, I'm afraid you've forgotten one very important thing. Well, please tell me what it is, Mr. You've forgotten that anybody, anybody could have done the very same thing. You haven't one iota of evidence that ties me up with the case. All you've got is a lot of pretty theory. Well, you see, I don't have to supply that evidence, Bill Royal. John Henley did it for me. He not only pointed one finger at you, he pointed five. What do you mean? He was determined that his murderer wouldn't go unpunished, but he had such a little time, just seconds. So he grabbed a tube of paint and squeezed it on his fingers. And even as he fell to the floor, he managed to pull his hand across his latest picture, that painting, incidentally, that's standing in front of you. What does that prove? That, my friend, proves that you are the killer. Because those five marks, Bill Royal, are purple. Royal purple. And now, back to Glenn Langan for the conclusion of... Mystery is my hobby. Oh, just take that man, Bart. Your move. Mm. Funny how you figured that was a murder. Sure looked like suicide to me. It was a paint inspector. Yeah? When I saw that he'd smeared his masterpiece with purple paint, I knew it must have some definite purpose. Uh-huh. That move laid you wide open, Inspector. I'll take these three. Call me, will you? Yeah, Janet. Then, of course, Bill was the only one who had the opportunity to do it. Well, aren't you going to move, Inspector? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. There. Yeah. Well, thank you, Inspector. That's two more. Ah, nuts. <laughs> yeah, but why couldn't the McAndrews have done it when he went out for a walk? If he went out for a walk, you mean, Inspector. No? But after that fight, John Henley would never have let him in. And, of course, uh, Cora Henley showed her connection with the deal by going back to her friends right after the murder. No true or loving wife would do that. After the people who started a violent quarrel with her husband just after his death. Well, why don't you move, Inspector? Why can't you? have got me all sewed up. Oh, gun, you bite. You beat me at everything I try to do, whether it's checkers or murder. <laughs> Here I had the most beautiful suicide I ever saw, and you have to go and make a mystery out of it. Yeah, but, of course, Inspector, of course, you certainly should know by now that... Mystery is my hobby. Mm. <laughs> 